episode 45, 45 is a good number, of Laura Trump Wanted for Questioning. 45 and 47, great numbers together. I'll let you go ahead and figure out what those mean. Let's see what questions you got for me today. Here we go. Question number one. When you went to college, was it already a place to push liberal socialist utopia propaganda? I mean, I think like subtly, it probably was. It wasn't so so blatant. Um, and I went to school in North Carolina. I went to North Carolina State. Shout out to the Wolfpack. Not a great football showing for us this weekend, but that's okay. Um, and so I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Perhaps had I gone somewhere more obvious, like somewhere in California. By the way, I almost went to UCLA. I was like this close to going. Thank God I didn't go. I say to my husband all the time, I'm like, could you imagine if I had gone to UCLA? There I probably would have been fully indoctrinated. Although I will say that, you know, while you have so many people falling so easily for this socialist you know, woke propaganda that is certainly pushed on all of our kids now, basically anywhere you go on any college campus. I do think that it's pretty amazing to see that there are some who don't fall for it or some who might initially fall for it and then quickly are like, wait a minute, this is crazy people stuff. This isn't real life. This isn't, none of this makes sense. Um, and I got to give a lot of credit maybe to their parents. Um, I'm trying to take notes. If anyone has any great ways that you kept your kid from not getting indoctrinated with the woke ideology at a college or university setting would love, you should write a book because we all want to know about it. And although my kids are four and six, I'm always looking to the future. I'm always trying to figure out ways to prevent that from happening to them. Um, so I don't think it was as pervasive as perhaps it is now. Now, what I will tell you is I went back to my alma mater to NC State say three or four years ago and I happened to go there for an event with Charlie Kirk to say that the reception was warm would be uh, completely incorrect they people like flipped out and, and rioted and were screaming outside and changing all sorts of really lovely things at me and I'm like you know what I that it is such a shame that this has happened at this school and I can't go back to the place that, by the way, I'm very proud to have gone to school at NC State. I had a great time there. Love the school. Um, shout out to the Wolfpack again. But um, it's really sad and depressing to see what has happened. We got to take our colleges back because woke is not going to stand there. We got to do it. Okay. Next question. If your father-in-law asked you to be his vice presidential running mate, what would your answer be? Well, I'm flattered that you put me in such a category. Um, I mean, obviously the answer would be yes. Would anyone turn that down is the real question. I mean, look, we know there's a whole host of people out there who are vying for that position. That's all they want. They want to be vice president. That's why they're hanging in the race. You all know who you are out there um, hanging in just to see if maybe you could be the, the VP nominee alongside Donald Trump. The only drawback would be that I would have to move to Washington, D.C. Here's the thing I would request, though. If I became vice president alongside my father-in-law, which, by the way, just imagine the hysteria. Trump, Trump, two Trumps running together. Oh, my God. The, the liberal heads across the country would simultaneously explode all at once. People would go bananas. Ah, it would almost be worth it to just announce that and then maybe be like, just kidding. Here's actually the person just to get the, the reaction from people. I would request to be the border czar. And I would actually make sure that I showed Kamala Harris, our current border czar and first female vice president who has let down the entire gender in such like, I mean, it's just been horrific to see what's happened. I'd be, go ahead and show her how you actually act as border czar and how you actually close off the southern border because I'll tell you something we cannot sustain the millions and millions and millions of people who are just coming on in the country we don't know who they are our tax dollars are going to take care of them their kids who knows in the future um, it's horrifying so day one I'd, I'd ask to be named borders are so if that sounds good to you yeah I'm ready to go but that's a very nice request um, or a nice thought to, that uh, he would request me to to be his running mate. 
we will report back on that one. So stay tuned. Okay. Next question. What is the worst attack you've received from the fake news? Oh, there are so many, aren't there? Um, I think the one that really annoys me the most because, well, there are two of them. It's, it's one is one has to do with me and one has to do with my husband. Um, so my husband has raised nearly $30 million for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And if you don't know about St. Jude, every family who goes to St. Jude gets free treatment. There's no child turned away. They take the worst cases of childhood cancer, um, deadly diseases. And they say, we want to study this because we don't just want to make money like a lot of hospitals do and treat the easy stuff and get money from the pharmaceutical companies, etc. We want to find out the new protocols and how to treat the worst of the worst. And then they send them out across the country. No family ever pays a penny to go to St. Jude. They take care of the child who is there being treated. They also take care of the entire family. And my husband at 23 years old started the Eric Trump Foundation when he decided the world had been so good to him. He wanted to give back and he had the lowest expense ratio of any private charity in the entire country whenever he had the Eric Trump Foundation. Well, when my father-in-law became president or was elected president, um, some of these really disgusting reporters out there with uh, the mainstream media decided they would get involved and try to accuse my husband of, I'm not even totally sure what the charge was, but that somehow he had had done something nefarious with the funds that were received. And it is utterly disgusting that anyone would ever say that. I've never seen somebody work so hard to negotiate pennies off of a dollar as my husband did because he know that, knew that that was pennies that would go towards kids with cancer. So uh, that one is pretty gross. Additionally, the um, idea that somehow uh, one of the things that is, of course, near and dear to my heart, animals, I have my entire life dedicated myself to trying to do anything I possibly could for homeless animals, animals in shelters, making sure that we no longer uh, euthanize animals in this country. And of course, there are these disgusting individuals who have insinuated that somehow I have profited off of that when in fact, I have never made a single penny. I've donated thousands and thousands of my own money to animal charities and have been happy to speak at any event that would raise money or awareness. That was pretty disgusting, of course. Um, so that those two are probably top of mind when it comes to the absolutely gross reporting out there and the um, fake news, as my father-in-law likes to say. Um, those two are, are certainly upsetting, to say the least. Okay. Okay, next question. When Trump is in office, can he support a bill that would prevent doctors receiving incentive checks for prescribing medications. That should be illegal. Absolutely, it should be illegal. By the way, I've been watching a lot of these movies that are based on all of these major pharmaceutical companies and the absolutely disgraceful way that they got doctors to do exactly what you're talking about and prescribe drugs like Oxycontin for people knowing that people were going to get hooked on them, that they were addictive. Um, and then obviously it led to just a disastrous effect after that. Um, I assume he would support a bill like that. Why not? And I'll tell you what, if the United States Congress, and we are going to need to get a majority in the Senate, let's make that happen in 2024 as well. And let's up our majority in the House, because I don't know what's going on over there that you just got people in the middle of the night being like, nah, I'm done on the Republican side. Are you guys kidding me? We need you there. We got a slim majority as it is. So we're going to have to go ahead and get a nice fat majority in the House and in the Senate so we can get great bills like that passed. And then when they hit the desk of President Donald J. Trump, the 47th president of the United States, I'm sure he will be happy to sign it into law. So we got a couple of things to focus on before we get there. One's electing Donald Trump, but then one is, of course, making sure we take back the majority in the Senate and let's let's up the majority in the House and make sure we get people in there who aren't going to just kind of sign off overnight because that's terrible. OK. Next question. Favorite book you read or learn from when in school? 
Oh my gosh. You know, I feel like I've talked about this before. <clears throat> we had the book it thing. So I think it was maybe three months. I don't, I don't remember the time frame. Maybe it was every six weeks. You had to read either a certain number of books uh, or a book that amounted up to like 40 points. And some books were worth like five points, shorter ones, 10, 15. But it was 40 points was what you had to achieve. So you read a book and then you had to take a test that um, you guys remember this and you had the little like um, pen and you got five little uh, stickers on it and you got a personal pan pizza from I think Pizza Hut. I mean, that was that was it. That was everything back in the day. And don't ro worry about it. I still have that um, kind of reflective pen somewhere at my parents' house. I'm going to check it out when I go home, by the way, for uh, for Christmas. But you had to get 40 points. And I remember the book Little Women because it's a thick book. That one was, I think it was exactly 40 points. Now, the, the of course, danger there was that's a very long book, especially for, I think it was in like fifth grade or something when I read this. And I remember uh, putting all my eggs in that basket and being worried because since it was so long to try and recall things from the beginning of the book when I went to take the test, would it work out? I got a 39 on the test. Isn't it amazing that I still remember this? And I got my sticker and I got the personal pan pizza. So I was very proud of that one and that one sticks out in my head. I think probably the most impactful book um, that I read was The Diary of Anne Frank. I don't think anyone who read that, and I believe we read that in like seventh grade or something, could look at the atrocities of the Holocaust in World War II the same way, having read that book. And I mean, wow. What, what an impact. I, I, you know, it's such a tragedy, of course, what happened to 6 million Jewish people during the Holocaust, but especially to Anne Frank. Um, I hope that somewhere she at least understands that her book and her diary had such an impact on the world because it certainly had an impact on me. Okay. I hope they're, I hope they're still allowing kids to read that by the way, when my kids get to seventh grade and you never know, I don't know where they are on any of that right now. But I thought of that the other day. Look at look around at the college campuses. Look at what they're doing. Look at the anti-Semitism out there. They better be reading the diary of Anne Frank whenever my kids get to seventh grade. If they're not reading it in the school they're in, first of all, pulling them out of the school and they'll be reading it at home with me. Okay, next question. What's cooler, the White House or Camp David? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. I mean, the White House is like, you know, that's the epitome. That's that's the picture you want to have. You know, walking down the hallways there, it really is. I mean, it's the people's house. It is a beautiful building to be able to go, like physically walk where so many presidents before, you know, the current have walked to, to be in, in the essence of like of such greatness that has existed there sleep in the Lincoln bedroom how cool is that um it's it's kind of hard to top that what I will say is that Camp David is really fun they've got all kinds of stuff there first of all I took my you know we went there with the kids we went there for for Thanksgiving one year and I didn't know you you just kind of walk up to a place and they're like oh would your kids like to ride a bike yeah, my kids would like to ride a bike. They got bikes, they got helmets, they got bikes with training wheels. They've got a full court, full-sized uh, basketball court. They have a full length, well, 25 meter, which is good for me, swimming pool. Are you kidding me? I swam laps. It was incredible. Um, they have a shooting range, so you can do some skeet shooting while you're there, trap shooting. Apparently they can bring in horses, which I never got to do. Uh, but I do plan on getting around to that second term. I know all the Democrats will like that out there. So yeah, I mean, it is really a very cool place. And there are little just cabins all over the grounds there at Camp David. And I think the story uh, as to like why Camp David even existed there and and how it came to be is also very cool. So it's all it, it's kind of like a you don't get to go there unless you like get to go there. So like a lot of people go to the White House, White House Christmas parties, Easter egg rolls. There's all kinds of reasons people are at the White House. It's a very official place. Camp David is a little more exclusive. So mm, they also have a full game room and a movie theater at Camp David. They have a movie theater at the White House too. It's a, to it's a toss up. I think kind of maybe, maybe I'm going to vote for Camp David here. Picture wise, 
the White House. That's a, that's a framer. You want to put that on the wall. Camp David, just to go experience it, highly recommend. Put on the to-do list. I have it on my to-do in the future after January of 2025 list. See how I did that there. Okay, that's going to do it for us here at Laura Trump. Wanted for questioning. Make sure you send us more. Love all the questions. Post it under this episode. Make sure you go to all of our social media at The Right View, at Laura Lee Trump. You can send us questions there. I don't see the questions before I answer them right here and get them in my hot little hand on my phone. So send me whatever. I'll do my best to answer it. So until next time, we'll see you back here for more of Laura Trump, Wanted for Questioning. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it. So I'm like a lot of people. I love to wear an Apple watch, but I hate how it looks. And I scoured the internet to search for the best looking Apple watch cases I could find. And I found it goldandcherry.com. They have absolutely beautiful watches, as you can see here. Everything is waterproof. Everything looks good with different outfits. You can get sporty, you can get fancy, but they are great quality, uh, made out of Delaware in the United States of America. And they have been kind enough to give me a promo code that I can share with you if you wanna get your hands on one of these as well. It's Lara. T L A R A T is the promo code to get yourself a discount at goldandcherry.com. And not only do they make Apple Watch cases, they also make great products for iPads and iPhones, keyboards, your desktop, everything you could possibly need. Goldandcherry.com. Use promo code Lara T so you can get yourself one of these today, too. At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say everything that we think and everything that we feel. We have no woke companies guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always gonna shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said this is the pillow that i want to sleep with and i gotta tell you she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow so it's a big hit around our house my dogs also uh happen to sleep on my pillow dog beds so all around the trump household we're big fans if you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code trump again promo code trump you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. Inflation has impacted all of our lives. I don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. 
That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. A lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going.